Yo, what's up? You may notice that I'm blurry. You may be thinking, what the hell? Why are you starting off a video blurry? And that's because I'm here today to talk about various things that I've gotten from various places. And the first thing I'm talking about is freaking pins. I've gotten plenty of pins since the last time I've seen you. In fact, I was actually going to show them in the last video I put out, but I decided to save it for another video because the video was already long as hell anyway. By the way, you should go watch that video if you haven't. Here's the first pin. As you can see, it's a dugout pin. Yeah, it's part of the official Little League Association. Uh, if you look right here, look, it says Little League Ball Inc. Look at there, 1985. It's a retro pin. Isn't that crazy yeah some of these pins today are indeed retro pins this next one is not retro however it's a pin from uh temu if you will it's freaking new world order yeah i'm a big wrestling fan i don't know if you know that don't really talk about it a whole lot but if you look at my subscriptions i am subscribed to many wrestling channels uh specifically wrestling bio shout outs to him I, I, i've been a patron of him in the past in fact uh as of recording i'm still showing up in his videos even after not being a patron for a while look at my gross cuticles ew the only wrestling pin i own to date next up is another retro style pin one that came out sometime in the 80s or so be it it's freaking mcdonald's in you mcdonald's in you fresh scrambled eggs coffee juice and hotcakes too just like sunshine in the morning mcdonald's in you ding except for it's a retro pin it's a freaking jukebox a retro mcdonald's jukebox and if you look right here freaking made in taiwan group 11 whoever the hell they are in that cray cray totes cray cray cringe as fuck next up is a pin i got off a bible bookmark yes it's a freaking uh bird a green bird a little cute little uh dove or whatever it looks kind of cool doesn't it next up is a set of two iu pins they're not earrings they are indeed iu pins i am from indiana and i i typically root for butler or if butler's not in that division i root for whomever else besides iu not the biggest fan of iu when it comes to basketball and football and whatnot mainly due to the uh lingering stench that bob knight put on the legacy of uh basketball particularly the guy's a Massive prick. Fuck that guy. Rest in piss. Here's another IU pin just for uh, the sake of it. Next up is one that's not retro. It's just a freaking star. It's a star. And what more can you say? I'm not trying to be a fake military guy. I'm just showing you my pin of a star next up is another small tiny little pin it's a freaking musical note i got off of temu in like a five dollar order i just thought might as well get this because it's quite cute and quite cool uh there were two other pins i got in that order but i ended up throwing them away because they were garbo what isn't garbo is this pin right here it's the state of indiana my home sweet home and if you look on the back it's got a little bit of chip damage but who cares who even cares i don't even care cute john tron meme of I care immensely. Yep, I'm stealing memes here, people. Finally, when it comes to pins in this section of the video, we're talking about this weird ass pin called the Kalorkin. It's it says zoom on it. Apparently, it is a Kodak Kalorkian or Kalorkin or however the hell you say it. Yes, it's a freaking toy pin from 1989. It's very odd, very weird. This retro pin I actually found uh, at my uh, friend's dad's house, who's uh, trying to clean up his house because it's a massive hoarder house, and he said. I could have anything pretty much retro that I wanted. So that's one of the things I wanted, as well as the McDonald's pin and several others that you saw today. Anyway, that's all I had to say about the pins. Let me uh, set up the recording so you can actually see my face and my beautiful haircut. Hey guys, I'm back and you can actually see me. You can actually see my glorious uh, short hair, as well as my devilish good looks. Uh, but you might want to wear a blindfold if you don't think I'm attractive because blindfolds are actually pretty good when it comes to listening to music as I have come to find out. Thank you uh, Dank Pods for getting me on that. I actually listened to quite a few things with a blindfold on that definitely enhanced the experience. For example, listen to Freebird. You'll notice all the instrumentation. You'll notice all the sort of audio effects they do to the song. It's a freaking wonderfully mastered, beautifully performed, just freaking masterpiece of a song that you really only appreciate if you take the vision out of it. You know, there's so much shit you can actually focus on and understand. On top of that, I'd recommend listening to uh, Countdown to Extinction by Megadeth with a uh, blindfold on. It's such a deep and such a rich album that if you're distracted, you just don't get the experience of that album. I, I listened to uh, some of the tracks with uh, a blindfold on and completely changed my perception of the album. It's a freaking masterpiece. No, I knew I knew it was, but I didn't really appreciate it until I wore that blindfold. And I can listen to music better now because I have new ear pads for my AKG K271s. I got the 
Keys off of a uh, shop uh, from Fort Wayne, which is kind of far from where I am, honestly, in Indiana. Fort Wayne is a city in Indiana. It's where my dad's from, funny enough. But yeah, it's a Fort Wayne uh, audio shop. I don't know where in Fort Wayne. Fort Wayne's a huge city, just so you know. I think it's like literally like the second biggest city in Indiana. It's fucking massive. But the point is, uh, yeah, it's like some sort of audio shop. Have these freaking official AKG ear pads that I use to replace my old crusty ones. And it's made uh, the experience of actually wearing the headphones a lot more comfy, if you will. And as a random aside, because for some reason I've had this for a while and I never bothered to include it in like a single video, I have this Kirby and Magalore pencil pad of some sort, or maybe it's just a carrying case. I usually just put my fidget toys in here and I carry my fidget toys around with me. But regardless, uh, it's a nice little cute Kirby and Magalore Nintendo pencil patch that came out when the Kirby Return to Dreamland game was a thing. I got off the Nintendo Rewards program. I used some of my silver that I got from being a good boy and looking at the promotional materials and whatnot, doing this whole sort of FOMO, like, play, play a game every week and, like, play online. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, yeah, that's that for uh, those particular things in my collection of keys, if you will. For those who did not see my uh, short, I'm going to inform you that I have a new AB setup. I got a Rockville RDAC 5 that accepts uh, coaxial, which I don't use, optical, which I use for my PS4, and PC USB audio that I use for my computer, and it outputs RCA, which I use for my speakers. Uh, yes, and I've shown my speakers on more than one occasion on this channel. I, I just love showing them, I guess. Not gonna show them again. Anyway, for those who watched the short, you would know that I picked up a Pearstone RCA cable as well as I already owned a Monster optical cable, but I said to get back up cables that are longer lengths in order to uh, make more room on my desk. I got this from Cables Direct Online on eBay. It's a freaking 12 feet just generic uh, freaking optical cable. And uh, when it comes to the RCA cable, I got that from Priced Right Sales on eBay. It's a freaking on gauge spelled O-N-G-A-U-G-E uh, as in like a speedometer or something like that. It is a freaking RCA cable. It's 15 feet. Instead of being red and white, it's white and blue. Yep, but it's still the same sort of RCA output that you would expect for a cable. If you're curious where I got these pads, because I mentioned they're from Fort Wayne, they're from a shop called Sweetwater Sound that you can also find on eBay if you don't live in the Fort Wayne area. So uh, pick up their stuff too, they're pretty cool. Anyway, that's pretty much all I have to say about the audio stuff. Now we're gonna move on to the most important part of the video, that being the video games. Ooh, video games. Fuck yeah. Let's go ahead and talk about the games. Yeah, let's talk about the games. They're all PS4 games. I do have one Switch game coming in the mail, but we'll get to that when we get to that. So uh, first up, when it comes to uh, the PS4 games, we have Disco Elysium, published by I Am 8-Bit. I would say if you're gonna pick up this game first and foremost, you need to do it either pirating wise or you need to buy the physical, not from an official retailer because the company that owns the rights to Disco Elysium totally fucked over the writers and developers and kicked them out. So, uh, yeah, fuck those guys. I decided to buy an official copy through an unofficial means through eBay, therefore not giving them my money. Yes, uh, this is the I Am 8-Bit copy. Uh, inside it comes with a poster. It has a code to the, uh, digital art book, although I'm not gonna show you that because I don't want to lose the code. Uh, Disco Elysium is a great game. Normally not into games that are this narrative-based, I should say, but I really like this game quite a bit. It's got a nice charm. It's got nice sort of dystopian vibes. It's definitely a cool made-up world that has a ton of lore dump. Apparently this is supposed to be a whole big universe never end up coming to be, but I really like the uh, choices that you can make of the game. I was decently far in it, but the problem is the game crashes quite a bit. About two hours in, I accidentally crashed the game, and I got sent back like an hour, so I had to redo like a good chunk of it, and uh, I decided just to get a little bit farther and take a break from it, and I'll be back to it in no time flat. I really enjoyed this game. This is a very, very good game. Uh, like I said though, I'd recommend either pirating it or buying a physical copy used or through eBay. Yeah, don't give the actual publishers their money. They're fucking greedy pieces of shit, so fuck them. Yeah, overall, I would say pick this up some dubious way. <laughs> Halloween is just around the corner. Ding! Just kidding, it's like August. Who fucking cares? Hey there, Windjammers. A few things I want to say before I move on to the next game. Uh, first and foremost, this game has tons of voices. Every line of the game is voiced. That's part of the director's cut update. For my future gameplay sessions, I'll probably turn off the narrator voice, which is a shame because the narrator, I believe, actually holds the 
the record for the most amount of voice lines recorded by one person for one character in a game. Which is funny because the guy I think was like never actually a voice actor beforehand, which is insane to me. But yeah, I'm probably gonna turn him off just because the amount of actual lines and like voices they have to deal with. Because of my ADHD, you know, the fact that I'm more of a visual reader as well as the fact that um in general I just don't like all those voices coming at me at once. It's a bit overwhelming. Yeah, I would say definitely I'll consider um treating this more of like a kind of half uh visual novel, half audiobook, if you will. Anyway, yeah, that's all pretty much I have to say. So anyway, I'll see you later. Peace. Next up in the series of games I have to talk about, well, I don't have to talk about him, but I want to talk about him, Mushoku Tensei Jobless Reincarnation Quest of Memories. It's based off an anime. Funny that, an anime. Yeah, I know. Um, it's actually published by the same people who published that Miss Kobayashi game. It's published by Bushi Road. It's uh, based off an anime that I've, quite frankly, never seen. Honestly, if there's anime that exists within the past, like, four to five years, most likely I've never even heard of it, let alone seen it. I think the last modern anime I saw, I believe, to completion at the very least, um, I've probably seen, like, clips of other anime, uh, would be a Ryakuma anime that came out for Netflix back in, like, 2020, and it's kind of cheating, because it's not exactly anime per se, it's, I mean, I guess, well, technically, it's Japan, like, freaking minions or anime, but, it, you know, to a Western otaku, maybe not, it's like a live-action sort of stop-motion animation style of, uh, animation if you will it's certainly more designated towards kids with a little bit of stuff for the adults you know i'm just a big fan of the same rio stuff i know call me a freaking pussy i don't care i would have more plushes but uh big boy my little doggy well not little anymore emmett chewed up uh the last remainder of that shit so i have to go without went went that was the last anime I saw. This uh, this source material that this game is based off, I have no clue what it is about, quite frankly. Um, yeah, I skipped the story entirely for this game, and if you're curious what kind of game it is, it is a freaking dungeon crawler. It is a dungeon crawler. It is in the same style as the Atrian Odyssey games, if you've ever heard of that. Or I guess, if you want to go real retro, you know, you could talk like the original Fantasy Star had modes like that. You could talk about Ultima or whatever, you know, so be it. When it comes to uh, the price, I got it for decently cheap i would say off of sewer gaia um i, I paid a, a lesser price because of, of the free shipping promotion as well as the fact that i guess the japanese copy is a lot cheaper and it is indeed one of those japanese copies that is entirely in english but that goes without saying i kind of mentioned that a little bit too much in my last video like obviously if you're in a japanese game most likely it is in english i'll just say that right off the bat this surprisingly enough does not have a ps uh, ps5 upgrade despite having a ps5 version i guess many games are just kind of phasing that out by now because it is a recent release it came out in 2024 which i'm surprised i was able to get for so cheap considering it is a recent release i guess it's more of a budget game but eh, who knows anyway overall i would say this is definitely a game that i'd recommend playing i played it you know skipping the story with the sound off listening to podcasts and whatnot i got a little bit lost but then i figured my way out i'd recommend it alongside the Etrian odyssey games i'd recommend it alongside uh wizardry i recommend wizardry games that, that's a franchise i forgot to mention wizardry is freaking amazing only problem is most of the games on uh pc and whatnot are way too expensive but that's beside the point. Uh, pick up Wizardry, pick up this game, and also pick up Atrian Odyssey. So without further ado, let's move on to the next freaking game. Like my Tommy shirt? Pretty cool. I don't know if I've ever worn it on video before. Up next is yet another Square Enix physical. I love buying those things. It's freaking Star Ocean the Divine Force. Yes, this is the third Star Ocean game that I own. The second one, physically. Uh, the first one that I owned was on Switch. The second one I already talked about was on uh, PS4. And by the way, before we talk about this one, I want to make a correction. Uh, the game that I talked about being Star Ocean the Second Story R, or whatever the hell it was called, uh, that one actually, believe it or not, uh, does have a physical in the West, although it's a limited print, similar to what they did with the Legend of Mana game, where it's a lot more common to find a Japanese copy. Yeah, they definitely decided just to uh, make it more of a uh, small release, because they didn't expect it to sell very well. Same thing with the Legend of Mana physical, but in, and I guess in other regions they thought, well, it'll, it'll sell better. You never know. But this one is actually one that is uh, American copy. It's rated T14, and it is indeed uh, a physical that is a lot more common. I got it off eBay. It's very cheap, in fact. Very cheap. I got a brand new sealed uh, 
Uh, this is developed by Quixel and Speedtree. I believe Speedtree is actually the, uh, one of the original developers of the series. So they've been around for pretty much almost all of them. This is apparently a return to form. I haven't played the other Star Wars games besides one and two. Uh, and those are remakes at that. Uh, but I've heard apparently that, uh, the middle ones in between those are not very good, but this one is definitely one that people like a lot better than those other two before. I think it was like five games total. I could be wrong. Some spinoffs, I'm sure. But the point is, regardless, uh, this is a, a great return to form. I noticed the story is very similar to those first two games. Maybe that's why, you know, you, you take part in either two character stories, a boy or a girl, and you and you uh, kind of get isekai into a world of whether you play as a, a guy, I forget his name, or a girl. It's definitely not Clunch. Real homies know about Clunch. I will say this much, the game is definitely more of an action RPG, emphasis more on the action as opposed to the last game, which had a lot more RPG elements. You know, this one is straight up just action with a slight tinge of RPG, if you will. Yeah, they're definitely more in the sort of like modern Square Enix style with just phasing out the RPG elements altogether. Like I'm pretty sure Final Fantasy 16 wasn't even an RPG like at all. So God knows they are just averse to making RPG games as of recent. Uh, yeah, so basically with this game, uh, it's, it's graphically pretty decent. I think the PS4 version looks just fine as opposed to the PS5 version. There is a uh, PS5 upgrade. Uh, God knows I'll never use it, but by the time I get a PS5, it'll probably be expired by then. Who knows? Yeah, I would say PS5 in general, is very nominal compared to like base ps4 even if, even if we're talking about ps5 compared to ps4 uh, pro that's even less of a comparison you know they're just so similar you know but there are limitations don't get me wrong but at the same time i would say when it comes to stuff like this it's pretty decent all things considered i would say definitely this is something where you could get a, get the ps4 version and not feel bad about it at all it's definitely a good game if, if you know what i'm saying the music is pretty decent actually and the story like i said is, is okay it's definitely more sort of tropey or formulaic but i'd rather have that than whatever crap they kind of shoehorn into modern games honestly i know on pc it has a middling review but maybe just get the console version i don't know Either way, though, I'd say, good going, Square Enix, you did a good thing, Bebow. Hey, real quick, one thing I forgot to mention is that uh, this game, I actually did rent at the library for a brief period. I actually played with the sound off and I skipped the story, which is why I think I didn't like it as much, but once I actually, like, bought it physically. I read some reviews and I'm like, let me give it a second chance. And so I actually played it with the story, you know, playing. And with the sound on, I actually enjoyed it quite a bit more. So I will say this much, uh, don't skip the story of a uh, RPG. The doy. Hey everybody, it's Future Matt here, here to tell you how much I fucked up during the Star Ocean recording. Yes, I just now realized I made a ton of mistakes when talking about the Star Ocean series. First and foremost, I said there were five games in the series that I owned. The fifth game is the one I was talking about. Turns out it's the sixth game. Yes, um, and I actually own four games out of the series. The one I forgot was the Steam one that I bought, the remaster on Steam, of the fourth game, The Last Hope. Yeah, I, I, I didn't even realize that I owned it until I actually just thought about it while just re-watching the recordings. It's crazy. Yeah, that one I actually owned well before I owned any other version of Star Ocean. And I, don't, I mean, I don't know why the hell I bought it back then. I wasn't much of an RPG fan like I am now, but I'm glad I did. And also, I mentioned that uh, the developer Speedtree had a hand in every game. It's not necessarily true. They had a hand in some of them, but the main developer I was thinking of that developed all of them is called Triace, and I mentioned them very frequently in the uh, last video when I was talking about Star Ocean, so I won't go into too much depth, but yeah, I meant to say Triace. I don't know why the hell I completely forgot about it considering I hammered it home a lot during the last video, but yeah, Speedtree is really only a, a helper studio. They don't really have much to do with that outside of the series. Anyway, uh, that's all I gotta say, and uh, fuck me, I guess. Am I right? Next up is the second to last game I am showing. The last one will be Hyrule Warriors from Timu for Nintendo Switch. I picked it up for a very good price, I'll have you know. I'm still waiting for it to ship, though. This is the third and final game in the Cybertron series. Yes, you may already know what it is. I actually own the PC version of the second game in the series. I got it off the limited stock of Steam codes available on Amazon. Play the game modded, because I'm a cool guy. The game came out for uh, the uh, early portion of the PS4's lifespan. Yes, we're talking about, without further ado, Transformers Rise of the Dark Spark. 
uh, came out in actually uh, 2014, so about the first year of the PS4's lifespan. Uh, I was in high school at the time, I didn't own a PS4, I was probably playing uh, 3DS and indie games on my shitbox of a computer at the time, of which uh, this computer uh, that I'm recording off of is kind of like an ancestor of, if you will, based on the parts that are in here. Uh, I paid about $26 for the game, got it at my local video game store, I'm not going to say which one, I almost said it, got it and was doxed myself. Uh, I, I used a 20% off coupon plus $9 of in-store credit. I got that from selling a game that did not support English because I uh, bought that on a uh, Japanese eBay seller's uh, page like a dumbass. Otherwise, the game would have been 40 bucks, which I don't know if that's necessarily the best price for it. But if you look inside right here, if you look right here, it says, uh, Still Wakes the Deep, new game. Uh, that's what I get for buying at, like, a local shop as opposed to, like, like a well, well-listed, uh, you know, eBay listing with plenty of details. But, eh, who cares? I mean, it, it, it's a delisted game. We'll get to that. The physical at the time, you could only pick up at Walmart. There's a little label on the insert saying that you could find a code inside for the character Stinger. I don't know who the hell that guy is. See, I don't know much about Transformers, funny that. Uh, but this game is not the only version that exists, the PS4 version that is. There's also the Windows version, uh, the PS3 version, the Xbox 360 version, the Xbox One, the Wii U version. Uh, there's also a 3DS version by way forward, but that one's not really the same game. It's kind of like a strategy RPG, which, uh, you know, I'm not really the biggest fan of, so yuck. Uh, this was considered mid by reviewers at the time, but honestly, it's not that bad. It's a third person shooter. Uh, yes, the story is a little bit complex. They tried introducing elements from the newest movie and it didn't follow the lore of the other Cybertron games, which fans were upset about. I don't give two shits about the story, honestly. I play with the sound off, listen to podcasts. Uh, yeah, um, the graphics, um, they're obviously compromised for the lowest common denominator, that being the Wii U, uh, port. Uh, which, funny enough, that version has no multiplayer, so I, don't, I mean, I don't know why they bothered porting it. Th that goes to show that, uh, Nintendo is just, uh, that shit with multiplayer, even now. The game got discontinued, uh, support-wise in 2020, and was therefore delisted, and it doesn't have multiplayer, which is... Very sad. The game also had a What Happened episode by famous, or in this case, infamous YouTuber Matt McMuscles. Him and his wife, particularly his wife, is the uh, reason why Super Best Friends Play uh, got discontinued, because his wife is essentially the Yoko Ono, even though Yoko Ono really isn't the Yoko Ono of, uh, you know, the Beatles, but this woman, she certainly was the proverbial Yoko Ono of Super Best Friends Play. And the reason why I have particular disdain for him is uh, because his name is Matt McMuscles, which is not his real name. His, his real name is Matt Kovaleski, which is not Don him, he has said that name before on Super Best Friends Play. In reality, though, uh, he also shares uh, a name very similar to mine. So when we both subscribed to uh, Resting Bios Patreon, we're right next to each other. And that makes me mad because I'm the better Matt Mick. I'm the real Matt Mick. My real last name is McMahon. I'll have you know. My last name is Irish. This guy's fucking name isn't even real. It's Matt McMuscles. McMuscles isn't real. If you're going to fucking stay on the Patreon, bitch. You gotta change your name to Kovaleski on the frickin' Patreon rolls. We beefin', bro. Fuck you and your little, uh, bitch boy Liam. What was I talking about? <laughs> anyway, see ya. Hey guys, believe it or not, in between recording sessions, I bought more games. I know, crazy. Matt buying more games in between recording sessions? Who would have thought? I mean, seriously, it's not like I do this every fucking video. Anyway, uh, we're talking about the last, or at least I hope the last, PS4 game in the video. And uh, these games I'm showing are in order of when I bought them slash received them, you'll see. Uh, this last game is Crash Bandicoot 4 it's about time and it's a little bit of a pun because it's about like time travel and it's also uh, it's about time they made a fourth game even though they, they technically did make a fourth game it's called wrath of cortex it wasn't very good um it was under a completely different publishing wing after you know uh naughty dog sold the sold the rights to it and sony you know no longer published the games and then uh you know there was a few other games uh twin sanity was notable it was pretty good uh the rest of them were hit and miss you know not not too great all of a sudden activision had the rights to it and they were like you know what let's revive the series after it being dormant for so freaking long and uh they made the crash insane trilogy which i didn't really like very much because in general i'm not the biggest fan of the older games i know crazy right so this is probably going to be my favorite game in the series by default it was about like 20 bucks got it at my uh, local cd slash vinyl slash collectible slash whatever the frick game store i can say which one but it is the different one is the second one within that area uh of the first one that i mentioned earlier on in the video crash bandicoot 4 I completely ignore the story. I really don't care about the Crash Bandicoot story. It is whatever. It's kind of a disappointment that because 
Toys for Bob made this game. They were kind of plot from the whole Spyro development and put into this new Crash development that Vicarious Visions had to be absorbed in, into the Call of Duty mines after they themselves made a pretty damn good remake with the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater uh, 1 and 2 remake, which was also on PS4 and it's a game that I own if you checked out uh, the first video I made before the uh, PS4 uh, collection video. Yeah, this one is, is, is good and then they then they made like a party game, which I don't really care about because honestly, it's kind of based off Crash Bass, but Crash Bass has always been kind of eh. It's always been the, you know, redhead stepchild of the uh, PS1 series because, you know, most of those games are good except for that one, I would say, probably, because it wasn't made by Naughty Dog during that awkward period before, you know, a lot of the modern ones came out. Crash Bandicoot 4 is definitely more sort of a modern style game. You can make it retro style. I choose not to. Um, it's definitely, though, it blends elements of the new newer games, even the ones before uh, 1, 2, and 3, as well as the modern games. It introduces a lot of stuff from like, even like the portable ones too. Like the, uh, one of the ones made by Precarious Visions, funny enough. Crash Bandicoot 4 is, it's pretty good. I told myself repeatedly, do not 100% complete this game. It is a nightmare. It is something that is like literally torture to me. So I'm, I'm just going for whatever I can do and the rest of it, I don't care. I will say though, the, de the game definitely pulls punches compared to previous games when it comes to like the brutal violence or not brutal. It's more like cartoony, but it was definitely a lot more brutal in those uh, previous games than uh, more sort of tame sort of PG sort of uh, cartoony violence. Although it's still got an E10. So I guess I mean, you might as well freaking go a little bit harder. On top of that, the whole idea that you don't get like smashed on top of the head with all the boxes that you missed at the end. I always thought that was funny, but I get maybe they want to appeal more to kids, but sanitizing stuff doesn't necessarily mean it appeals to kids. It just means that like you please parents who might be a little bit too anal retentive. It is pretty cheap. You know, the physical, I'm pretty sure uh, does not have the issues of the previous uh, physicals. Like for example, I think like the Spyro physical, like only has the first game on there. And like there's other Activision physicals that have this issue. I mean, Activision to me is like a, such a hit and miss comedy. Sometimes they produce bangers like this and sometimes they're making like dumb-headed decisions that completely like ruin the company and now with the uh, Microsoft buyout looming and potentially falling apart due to FTC violations who the hell knows what's gonna happen with Activision who knows if Crash is gonna be even owned by Activision however many years you know I'm glad we were able to get uh, a good Crash game while we have it we gotta treasure these sort of things anyway uh peace See you in the next part. The second game I got in between recordings is a Switch game. Yes, it's one of two Switch games, the second game you already know about. But the first game I got, believe it or not, I first got Assault Suit Lanos for PS4, but then I thought it was too hard, so I, I returned it and got a store credit, and I also spent some of my own money to get this game. It was $40 from that same uh, store. In fact, it was the same time that I bought the uh, copy of Crash 4. It's freaking Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. Yes, it's a game I've been aching to get for a while but i finally decided just to pick it up why did it take me so long this game is freaking incredible i love it i love super mario 3d world it's probably one of my favorite if not my favorite 3d platformer from uh, nintendo and bowser spear is pretty good but i haven't completed it yet i haven't completed 3d world but i plan on doing it because it's quite the fun experience i played it for like about three days in a row and i've loved it ever since it is a fantastic game. It really is. Um, I love the music. The music is probably the best part about the game. The graphics are actually pretty nice as well. Especially the Bowser's Fury uh, graphics. And the Bowser's Fury music is also pretty damn good as well. As well as the 3D World music. Um, I will say this much. I haven't played online. I haven't played uh, multiplayer online. I could, but I decided not to because I don't want to play with just randos or whatever. Yeah, this this physical um, does not come with a manual or anything, but it does have a nice cool interior. It has like, uh, you know, like a little Bowser's Fury uh, poster inside, basically. It, it was one of those games that you kept thinking, like, is it going to come out on Switch? Is it going to come out on Switch? It was a Wii U exclusive for the longest time, but eventually it, it made its way to Switch. It was vastly improved. Apparently it's a lot faster. It has a lot more gameplay tweaks. And plus there's a whole bonus game inside of it so hell yeah dude hell yeah i'm cheating and using amiibos to get um multiple lives i know there's like an infinite live trick but i don't know how to do it because i suck at mario and i do die quite a bit and sometimes i die on purpose just to get the uh just to get the uh, green stars i'm gonna try to 100 complete it i know it might be torture given that the end levels are pretty damn hard but i'm gonna try my best and uh, i'm gonna have a grand old time doing it i swear to gosh dang diddly fuck darn cat theme is it's all right i mean I'm more of a dog person myself, but I get why they chose cats. Cats are a lot more universally appealing when it comes to aesthetics, for sure. Um, I'd say pick this up for about 40 bucks if you can find it. Oh, preferably new. If you can find it for new for 40 bucks, that'd be fantastic. But if not, then just 
Pick it up, Hughes. Who cares? Well, howdy there, partner. The last game of the freaking video is Hyrule Warriors, yes? Indeed, it's the PAL copy. It's rated Peggy 12. Yep, it's the combination pack of the 3DS and Wii U game before, published for Nintendo Switch, not the uh, Breath of the Wild prequel, sequel, whatever you want to call it. That one I don't really plan on owning because, I don't know, it's, I don't really care. But this one is one that I definitely wanted to own at some point, and I got it on Timu for $27 and some change. And plus there was credit, but either way, I'm really happy with this purchase. I got it for the cheapest I think I'll ever possibly be able to get it. The game itself is quite good. I'm a big Musou fan, but I think you if you watch my channel then you know I'm a big Musou fan. I love the Warriors format. I love Team Ninja. I love Koei Tecmo. I love Omega Force. I love all that shit. Definitely reminds me of some of my favorite Zelda games for sure. It's got all the elements from all the best Zelda games in my opinion. Although no CDI so uh, worst game 0 out of 10. Gerard Khalil the completionist definitely uh, gave a good insight on how much there is to complete the game but rest in piss to his channel he fucking ruined it by being a scammer so fuck that dude. But anyway uh, yeah he gave a good indication of how much there is to complete which i don't really know if i'll ever be able to complete but i'll play as much as i can it's not exactly the hardest game to com you know complete gameplay wise just a lot of stuff to do if you will if you look inside the game itself has a freaking little map isn't that cool a map of hyrule yes indeed as you can see right here it has the little uh triangle the green triangle that a lot of european games have or maybe not even it's like green just like various colors the triangle and has the centered text that i don't exactly like but i put up with because i'm not picky about regions when it comes to games unlike a lot of people unlike a lot of collectors i don't really care i mean i know scott the was or scott the bold i would say yeah i'm bringing that back Hashtag he's bold scott doesn't necessarily like that stuff because he's like a purist but i'll go with whatever's cheapest i won't go for the ntsc version the ntsc version is the most expensive that's for name sure Overall, I'd say when it comes to using Timu, um, be careful with it. I know a lot of people don't really like to give up too much of their information. To me, you know, I view it as my information is already out there. Why, you know, give too much credence to that? I know some people definitely want to hide certain things or want to be more private. I would say use Timu with caution if you are using it. And definitely do not fall for the sort of flash game, sort of like, you know, gotcha style scams that they try to run with trying to get like free items or whatnot. I would say in general, be sure to be cautious. If you want to pick up the game, I would say try to get for as cheapest as you can, but if you don't want to use Timu, I'd say maybe just go to a local game store and pick it up if you can find it. And uh, overall, when it comes to all the games I picked up today, this is probably one of the ones I'm most satisfied with when it comes to how much I paid. That's all I gotta say, and uh, I'll see you whenever I see you. Anyway, uh, peace.